Okay, just to reiterate, we're going to do Mac shortcuts and HTML linking stuff. So that's exactly what I think you would benefit the most from. And I think other students will benefit from that too. Okay, so the first thing we went over was Spotlight. Spotlight is a utility where all you got to do is press command space. And then you can go to any app that your heart desires, which I think is really good just by typing it in and pressing enter. The next thing I want to talk about is um, uh, how window management works in Mac. So if you look on a Mac, there should be a button that kind of looks like this um, on your keyboard somewhere. Looks like, let me see, looks kind of like this. Doop. Is it like a little square next to the volume up button? Yeah, it should be like by your F3, but it might not be depending on the Mac that you have. But I have the 2020 version Mac. Oh, wow. I don't, I wouldn't know by spec, but it should, you should have a little key on your keyboard that looks kind of like this. Something like that. Do you see something like that? Yes, no, maybe so. No. This thing, see it? It should be like towards the top, the very top. Should be like near your F3 button, I think. They should have a little thing that looks like that. Oh, I have like the same. I see it's F to F3. It has like three rectangles. Yep, that's it. Okay. What I want you to do is hit that real quick. And what you should be able to do is open up this screen that looks like this. Oh, it says Zoom would like to access control of your PC. Oh, don't don't stress about that right now. Um, but do you see if you press that button, do you get this screen where you get these things at the top? Or actually, in order to show those, I think you might need to hover over the top. But it's like yes, yeah, you... this top and it has like a plus sign. Yep. So the way that oh. I like to think about how this works on Mac is these are like your full screens. So imagine you're working on two different things at the same time. One way of handling this is you take a window that's not full screen like this, you make it full screen by clicking that maximize button, and now you have all these different full screens that you could flip between. And what you can do is actually flip between these by swiping left and right with three fingers. Does that make sense? Oh, wow. That's cool. Yeah. I learned something new. So that's pretty fun. You can also open up this thing by swiping up with three fingers too. I should have probably mentioned that first. If you want to open this, you could also swipe up with three fingers. So, like, it's really nice because you could just swipe up, swipe down, swipe over, whatever. You could also take these and drag them around and change the order of them, which is really good. We'll explain why, why that's useful in a second. Okay. So now that we kind of have all, all that basic window management stuff down, that's enough for now. What we're going to do is we're going to open up our terminal by hitting command space, just typing in terminal. Boom. Now I have a terminal open. I'm going to make this terminal full screen. You don't have to, but I just feel like it. I like working with full screens. I think it's good. You don't always have to, but I just felt like it. So now that I have that, you should have something that looks like it won't actually look like it may not look like this squiggly line for you. Um, if it doesn't, if you want it to look more like mine does, you can go to, oh my Zish, which is this thing. And you can just basically click this command and copy it. So if you want, I could actually send this to you. What's your last name, Lisa? Nelson, is that you? Yes. Cool. If you want, you can just copy and paste this command into your terminal and then it will look a lot nicer, your uh, Zish screen, but you don't have to. Yeah. Um, Once you're here, actually, are you gonna do that right now or no? If you want to, I'll, yeah. okay, I'll pause the recording for a second then. Okay. So in your terminal, you should see something like this. Now it might look more like slash users slash Jonathan Higger, which is my name, slash, uh, and then whatever. It might look something like this, but it that is that is telling you where you are located, and it should be to the left of where you could type or above where you could type or something like that. This is the place that you are CD'd into. What does that mean? What that means is, let's say I were to open this up just by opening the current folder that I'm in right now I'm inside of this folder called Jonathan Higger. Now I had to drag this in here so that way I could get it. Otherwise it wouldn't actually show up here. But the idea is if you go ahead and type into your terminal open dot, you will also see, Hey, look, you're just in a folder somewhere, right? Does that make sense? When you're at this folder, 
all that you're doing with your terminal, a lot of the times, not you can also do other shit too, but most of the time when you're just working with your terminal, what you're doing is you are basically manipulating the folders and files inside of the folder that you're in. I'll pause for a second. Let's see. Okay. So basically what you're doing is, let's say I create a file from my terminal. So let's say I do, I'm going to make a directory and we're going to call it a uh, corny folder. When I do that, inside of here, you'll see that I have a corny folder that I created, right? What I'm going to do now is I'm going to CD into that folder. So now you can see I am in my home and then cd from there into my corny folder that is just like me clicking like this and being inside of this folder in my finder same kind of concept the only difference is it's from my terminal does that make sense yeah okay. so now what i could do is let's say i make files in here i'm gonna do touch and then i'll make an index.html an index.js or something like that I created these files inside of my corny folder. Does that make sense? Oh, wow. So yeah. the way that I like to think about it is this and this are two windows into the same store that just operate a little bit differently. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, okay. So my question, I have one question. So, okay, so normally, like, um, on a Mac or Windows, you sure. go to your um, folder and you pull it up. But through here, through the terminal, you kind of pull it up the same exactly, but a different way. Yes. Yeah. So, in other words, that's exactly what it is. Okay. And, and to rephrase that, in here, you move around shit, you create shit, you delete shit by clicking on shit. So, for example, mm -hmm. if I want to delete this, I right-click it, and then I click delete which I don't even know where that is. I don't even know where delete is, but I can click it and then click like the delete button on my keyboard and it's gone, right? But okay. in here, you have to do it with commands. So if I want to create a file, again, app.css, boom, I created that file. If I want to remove that file, rm app.css. If I want to create a folder, make directory some nested folder, right? If I want to move inside of that folder, I now have to CD into it. And now it, that would be like me being in here. If I want to CD out of that, I could CD dot dot, which means backwards one. So that's like me moving back like this. And you can see now I just went from being inside the nested folder to being inside my corny folder, which makes sense. Now, I, the good news is this is recorded. So all these commands you're going to have on recording, but even better than a recording, if you want to learn how to do something from your command line, instead of doing it from here, all you got to Google is uh, how to blah, 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 blah in Bash. Bash is the name of the command line language that this runs off of. Does that make sense? Yes. Cool. So now that we got that out of the way, what I want you to do is follow along with me. We're going to make a, uh, we're going to make a uh, projects folder for you. And then in that products folder, that's where you're going to make your new shit. Okay. okay. So from your terminal, I want you to go ahead and type in MKDIR. What do you think that stands for? Any idea? No. Make a directory. And oh. make a directory is just like a folder, not a file, a folder. So if I type in make directory, and then we're going to call it like my. Dev slopes projects, right? Now what you're going to see is inside of here somewhere you're going to have a folder called my Dev slopes projects. You don't actually need to have your Finder open. It's okay. We can we can kind of trust it at this point. Now that I kind of showed you what it does, okay. Now okay. what we can do is cd into my and I'm going to type in de and I'm going to press tab. And when I press tab, it's going to auto complete based off of whatever the string started as. Does that make sense? So try that out. Okay, I typed the first part like my dev slopes projects, mm -hmm. and I put CD. I'll put it down there. That's probably why it's not working. You put a what in there? 
I have put a dot in it. Okay, now it's showing up. Cool. So now you're going to CD in there. And then what you should do is you should look and see, did your path change? So my path changed from being home to my DevSoaps project inside of home. Does that make sense? Right. Cool. Now I'm going to make one more file and I'm going to call it, we're going to call it um, my tube. Okay. So I just did MKDIR my tube. And actually, if I want to see all of the files and folders inside of this folder, I could type in LS and I could see, oh, hey, look, I have my tube in there. And let's say I had a few different projects. So let's say I have another one. Don't You don't have to follow this part, but let's say I had my tube. Let's say I had the SAS project. Uh, let's say I have the responsive project, something like that, right? If I type in LS, you could see all of these listed here. Does that make sense? Any idea what LS stands for? No. I think it just means list. I don't, I don't know if it means anything else, but <laughs> that's how I remember it is. I think of it as a list, list the shit cool. inside of here. Cool. Anyways, now that I have this, this may not work for you. And if it doesn't work for you, I I'm going to want you to share your screen again, but I want you to try typing in code and then I'm going to type in my, and then I'm going to hit tab just to finish off with my tube. And what that should do is it should open up VS code with my tube as what it's scoped to. Okay, I did that, but it says code. CC Which code command not found? No, it doesn't say that. It just gives me like three different codes, like code CC1, code design. Can you go ahead and share your screen? Yes. Cool. That is so serious. So do code and then space and then start typing in my tube. And it does look like you spelt it wrong, but that's fine. Just press tab and it'll automatically complete with the incorrect spelling. There you go. Now press enter. And it says command not found code. Okay. So what I need you to do is instead of just sharing your terminal screen, try sharing your screen again, but share your whole window. So it should say, okay. I think on Mac, it, what it says is desktop one or desktop two or screen one or screen two but it's not saying the explicit window, it's the entire screen. There we oh, go. Yeah. Cool. Okay. So now let's click on VS Code. Well, and what I want you to do is go ahead and hit Command Shift P for me. Actually, before you do that, can you open up your Finder and go to your Applications folder? Yeah. So just click on Applications, it's on the top left. Boom, and then let's just make sure VS Code is in here. Sometimes when people install VS Code, they don't install it correctly, and they just forget to drag it in here. I don't think I dragged it in, so I'll just... Yep, oh, so just, you can literally mm -hmm. just drag it right in there. Come on. Should be oh, able no, to. Okay. There we go. Nope. Come on. Nope. Uh, you may have it in downloads, and you may have to drag it from there. Um, interesting. Go back to applications. Maybe it's in there. We just didn't see it. So try scrolling up slowly. I don't think it's that in it? here. Interesting. That's weird. Because I will always look for it. Try holding just... control and then clicking on Visual Studio Code at the bottom right there on the on, on your desktop. And you might be able to show in Finder or something like that. Options, maybe. Actually, you know what? That means it's on your desktop. Just click on desktop on the left. I'm being dumb. See, so go to Finder. Sorry, that was silly of me. You should be able to swipe up with three fingers and find it that, that window somewhere. Try to swipe up with three fingers. Just like before. Okay, so then click on that Finder window. Nope, no, 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 nope. It's right there. Find this is Finder right here. The yeah, that is the thing with applications in it. Yep. So what I want you to do now is click on desktop, which is a little bit below on there, and then drag VS Code into applications on the left there. Nope. You should. You have to click it and hold it. That's what you're gonna have to do. Nope. No, no, no. You have to click the uh, icon that's there. So click and hold that. 
I think fun. I think you need to make sure you hold it. Mm -hmm. There, you, there go. you go. Now drag it over to applications. Boom. Yes. Move it. Good. Okay, now go to VS Code. This is important because if you don't do this, then the change doesn't stay. So now go to VS Code. Actually, just open up VS Code. Like you already have it open. So just swipe up with... Usually swiping up with three fingers is a good way to flop between three things. Okay, okay. now in here, I want you to hit Command-Shift-P. And type in install. And see down there where it says install code command and path? Just click on that. This one at the bottom? Nope. The Unless install. That's uninstall. uninstall. Yep. Unable okay, to find exactly. script. Oh, you know what? You may have to quit VS Code and open it again. Try that. Just because we moved it. I would just... You could try saving it. That's fine. Okay, okay. now try opening VS Code again. And then try doing that again. Command-Shift-P. And then install okay. that code command. Yeah. So that's second from the bottom. Boom. There you go. Okay. Type in your password. Hey. Okay, now go back to your terminal. And go ahead and type in just actually just close out of that terminal and open up a new terminal. It's like you're restarting your terminal so it loads all the stuff. So now just go ahead, command space, and then type in terminal. I would also encourage you to not minimize windows like that. It makes them a lot harder to find. I think you'll find that once okay. you get used to that flow of, I'll show you in a second. Now go ahead and type in CD into your dev slopes or whatever. So type in DEV and then press tab. Oh, is that what you called it? There you go. Yeah. And then go ahead and type in my tube. So just type in MY and then press tab. Boom. And now press enter. Okay, now press code, space, dot. That means open, and then that dot means the current folder. No, 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 just, just a dot. I meant just like a space character. Yep, boom. Okay. Good. Now go ahead and press enter. Cool. Now that oh. opens up your my tube. Yep. Okay. There you go. Thanks. So I'm going to take over from here and click, oh. yes, I trust the authors. And now your window should look exactly like mine. For the record, anytime I say right click, what that means is hold control down and click is the same thing, right? Uh, just so you know, not command, control. Um, anyways, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna we're gonna make some files. I'm gonna make index.html and I'm gonna I'm not gonna get very far in this. And we're also gonna have page two.html. And for now, this is as far as we're gonna get. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and Fill out both of these pages boilerplate by typing in an exclamation mark and then pressing tab. I'm going to do it here too. Exclamation mark, tab. Now I have boilerplate on both of these, which is really good. And then inside of the body of the index, I'm just going to make an H1 that says, hi, I'm the index. And on page two, I'm going to make an H1 that says, hi, I'm page two. Okay. And this is about as far as we're going to get with linking is I'm going to make an A tag here. And I'm going to say, this is going to say home. And maybe it'll have the, uh, I don't even know how to do that in here. Anyways, we'll say home. And then this one will say uh, A tag. This one goes to take me to page two. Okay. And if to run this, I'm basically just going to click go live. And when I do that, boom. So now I can click this, but it doesn't actually take me to page two. It doesn't do anything. That's okay. Let's navigate to page two up here first. So I want you to imagine that everything in line with this is where a slash means. And actually let's go in here and we're going to call this nested. And we're going to do nested page in here just to kind of give you an idea of what's going on in here. Boom, H1, this is the nested page. Okay, today we're just gonna go over absolute file path linking, but basically what happens is this. 
If I want to go into this folder file, all I got to do is, since this is at the root, the root is basically anything directly in here, right? Since it's at the root of my project, if I want to go there, I just go slash page one or is page two dot HTML, right? Now I'm on this file. I'm just referencing it by its path. Does that make sense? Yeah. And this is how you navigate it in the browser. So let's go back to home. So I could go to index.html as the home. And actually, believe it or not, at default, if you don't go anywhere, it defaults to index.html. Index.html is a reserved keyword that specifically means, hey, no extra paths there. So now that we kind of have an idea of how to flip around those, let's go to that nested page. So this is in nested, nested page. So for example, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the nested folder. Then I'm going to go into nested page.html. And now I'm in that nested page. Does that kind of give a rough idea of what's going on there? Yes, so far. So the same way that I can control what page I go to by moving this URL up here in my browser, I can take that and just dump it into an A tag and it will work exactly the same. So for example, if I say, take me home, country roads <laughs> in here, and I take me to slash, that's going to take me home. If I go here and I say, take me to page two, I can go to slash and actually VS Code's helping me out, page two.html. Hmm. If I want to go to the nested page for my index, I can go to nested slash nested page.html. And this will say, and from here, if I want to go back home, I just do that forward slash. And with all this, now I can kind of flip around here. Take me to page two. Oh, let's go home. Take me to that nested page. Oh, okay. Take me home, country roads. Boom. Does that make sense? Yes. Cool. That's the lesson for the day. Woohoo. At some point, I'll do more Mac shortcuts, but oh, that was fun. Oh, I almost clicked end meeting. Okay. Uh,